stackers. Today we are doing our in-depth discussion of This Is Going To Hurt by Adam K. It's the journal of a junior doctor or a guy who's uh, climbing through the ranks of doctoring. Adam K wrote it because he wanted to draw attention to what was happening at the time in England and how the government was uh, really throwing some propaganda out about doctors only being in it for the money and they were trying to privatise healthcare a lot more because they were trying to Americanize it, which is a bad idea, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so he wanted to bring attention to it and be like, actually, they're not in it for the money because they get paid. Cool. He was like, I need to talk about my experiences. Yeah, Just he's, he's like, someone needs to defend them and... Yeah. This as, is my account. Yeah, as somebody who went through it, he was like, he he, need, he wanted to help. We actually got into this book straight away because I was I was talking to Elise before this and we were saying that we got hooked pretty quickly. And I think it's because it's written in sort of diary entry way, but as well, there's a lot of terminology, obviously, that we wouldn't get because we're not doctors. But he has like little uh, things at the bottom, like funny comments Almost. explaining what it is. It just made it really easy to read and relate to. And especially because of the fact that he would often put in really sarcastic humor in there. And so that's always relatable and easy to get along with. And he'd always put in very funny stories or weird stories and tales about people that would come in and things that would be stuck up them. And it was it was just funny to read because it was so different from anything that we've experienced. But the way he wrote it was just very simple and relatable. They're just diary entries that he went through and changed names and dates. And all the different ones, you can sort of get his feelings in the of the day through them because there are some where he just had like a funny day and there was just a funny anecdote that he wanted to relate. Mm. And then there are other days where he's had a really bad day or he's just tired. And you can sort of get that through how he ends them. And then there are the ones that, where he starts it with moral maze. And those ones, I always felt like, whenever I saw a uh, entry started with moral, moral maze, maze yeah. I was like really interested. Yeah. Cause I'm like, oh, I wanna know what this dilemma he had was. I wanna yeah. know what he had to do, how, how he had to decide. Yeah. And I was like, what would I do in this situation? Not that I'm an expert in any way. No. So. But it was, it was really interesting as well to see his interactions with his friends as well, who weren't doctors or in the medical profession and how they kind of just didn't get it like there were a couple times where he was saying he had to like miss his friend's stag do or he had to miss like an important date with his partner and you were like yeah geez they like really sacrifice this stuff for what they're doing they're getting paid really badly and so it was really interesting to kind of then go oh like this person has struggled in different parts of their life to make sure that other people are healthy he brought so much attention to it that like i didn't really think about how much these doctors go through. Because I don't know any doctors. I have nobody in my family that's gone through medical school or anything. Mm. So it's not something that I've ever really had to think about aside from when I go see the GP. But, <laughs> like, I go see the GP for, like, really silly stuff. Like, I haven't been to the hospital in a while. I had a really bad migraine when I was last there. And I remember, like, the doctor who did my blood test hit the vein or something or wasn't pressing it. And so it, like, a more blood came out than it should have. And I remember at the time being like, oh, come on. But then I'm like, actually, he's probably been working for hours and he's probably really tired. And so I'm like, you know what? I didn't die. The way he brings attention to like what different doctors know, different doctors know very specific things mm. about the specific field. It makes sense because like doctors don't have to put in IV lines very often. Yeah, exactly. Just the nurses do that. Yeah. So usually nurses, if they see like a bruise around where an IV has gone in, they're so like, did a doctor do that? But it's just because they, that's not what they're doing. That's not specifically their field, yeah. but they, they because they just don't theoretically have, do it. Yeah, they just don't have the practice that the nurses have it because they, they do it like every day and doctors yeah. are doing other stuff, I guess. I personally learned a lot about <laughs> uh, obstetricians and gynecology. Yeah. <laughs> I learned <laughs> stuff that my vagina is going to do. <laughs> like eventually it's just going to try and escape. Yeah, apparently like, cool. you get to an age and there's a thing that happens and just like... Just a weakness in the muscles. Yeah, weakness in the muscle and you have to do like pelvic floor episode... <laughs> episode Pelvic floor exercises. Otherwise, like, your vagina starts like turning itself inside out. And I'm like, what the hell? There were so many funny little anecdotes of like people that had used condoms wrong. No, there's one where this dude um, has a toilet brush stuck up his ass, right? Bristles first. <laughs> And um, and the mother like who brought him in was like, oh, it's so lucky his best friend was staying. This in the dude space. was staying in the guest room when this happened. <laughs> and I'm like, like she has no oh, idea. Wow. And it was really like interesting as well because they had funny moments that they thought were going to be serious. Like they had this precaution for people who were in abusive relationships that Ooh, in the female yeah. bathroom there were red stickers and a sign that said if 
you are being abused and would like to talk about it, like, and need to talk about it, put a red sticker on the front of your notes and we will get you a loan. He had a patient come in and had, like, a bunch of red stickers on the front and he was like, okay, and so they had to get the husband yeah, out of the room. Yeah, but he never had to deal with it before, so he was like, oh, shit. This yeah. Is serious. And so it ended up, like, getting the husband out of the room and talking and she was like, what are you talking about? Found out that their little two-year-old had just, like, played with the stickers and, like, put it on and I was like, oh, my God. There are so many moments where, like, there'll be a really harrowing scene. A baby has been stillborn or the mum's gonna have to terminate pregnancy because it's not safe for her and dealing with like the patient being like obviously devastated by this and then the next scene being about something really funny that happened like an old lady who was like walking around and doing funny stuff there's another story right where somebody ended up with a remote was it up it was either up the butt or up the vagina one of them one of those oh yeah and being like <laughs> oh yeah i accidentally sat on it he's like sure. she's like i mean yeah maybe i guess that, that, that seems happen. plausible yeah and then he pulled it out and there was a condom on it and he's like well <laughs> he's like huh. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally huh it shows that doctors totally know what you're trying to do when you're like making up stories they're just like just they tell must us. hear so many stories mm. there's a a moment where he's out with friends and they've just been celebrating and drinking and he's like halfway to drunk or is drunk mm. right and he comes across these like this group of teenagers and this kid is like lying on the ground with blood just everywhere because he's like cut open an yeah. artery in his arm and he's like shit like i have to help he's the, he's the doctor right but he's still like kind of drunk and uh the kids are trying to be like oh he like fell in the glass and he's like i don't care that you obviously just broke into this uh shop like, I don't give a shit. That's not his job. Yeah. That's, his that's job is about. to, like, save this kid's life. And how he'd talk about when he would go to different hospitals every six months and how he'd basically have to, like, uproot and relocate. And it was... Yeah. He didn't get paid for that at all. Like, there was no reimbursement for the cost of moving or anything like that. He was talking about the size of the deaneries, like, where they'd be moved um, within one deanery. One of them was just Scotland was the deanery. And they're all things that I like didn't think about either. And the fact that they often have to fill out their paperwork afterwards. And if there's a mistake, they'll obviously get told off and how like, depending on where they are in the hierarchy, different people can get told off for other people's mistakes and how like little mistakes that would happen. Often you'd have patients like getting really mad about it and like trying to sue and stuff. And he's like, look, like, of everyone that we go through, there are going to be tiny mistakes that are going to happen. It's like when he felt really bad about accidentally cutting like this baby. baby yeah, because he cheek. there was a cesarean that he had to do. Yeah, it was like an emergency. Like it had to the baby had to come out otherwise. Yeah, and it was like at the end happen. of his shift. And it was yeah, and he was exhausted, right? Yeah, and he accidentally cut into the baby's cheek. Only and a nick though. He was yeah, it was like it didn't it wasn't going to scar. It didn't need stitches or anything. It wasn't deep. And he mentioned to the parents, he was like, I'm so so sorry that this happened. And the parents apparently were like really understanding. They were like, No, don't worry. About it. we understand it was an emergency and you had to rush a bit and he was like yeah but it shouldn't happen and he was like beating himself up really hard yeah that. and i felt so bad for him because he was just so tired you get to a point and it's as bad as being drunk they have on-call rooms where they can stay while they're on call to be like for an emergency whatever but they had beds so they could nap and then they took the beds away because they were like oh. <laughs> You can't, you can't sleep. Let them sleep. Did you have any expectations when coming into the book? All I knew was the title. I didn't actually know anything about the book. I was like, this is going to hurt. I'm like, oh, cool. It's going to be sad. I didn't know it was nonfiction. I didn't think of it as a nonfiction book. Like, it's all real stories. But yeah. it reads kind of like a fiction book. Yeah. But, um... My expectations were just that it was going to be sad. I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know what purpose it had behind it. Mm. I didn't know why it was written. But... Like, I loved this book, actually. Why he wrote it is, like, really admirable, for one. Why he shared his stories. And in the end, like, the afterward or something, he's like, some of my closest friends will be hearing the story of why he left, like, for the first time. Because yeah. he just didn't talk about it. I think as well it really, really humanised him and just all doctors in general. Like, reading it, it was just so human and so funny and just was a roller coaster of emotions. It went through basically everything. This is such a good story because each diary entry like I'm sure it was edited obviously at the editor's office and they had to change names but it was like a real story that happened and it was like his opinion on it and perspective and I think because it was just like a real person it just made everything feel more impactful than I think if I'd known it was fiction I would have been like oh it's fiction like that's so far-fetched but because I knew it was real I was like oh my god like that yeah. actually happened I like I read the forward or something I wasn't prepared for like a, such a serious book I thought it was gonna be like uh something something dying at the end or whatever 
And I was, I had no idea. But I think as well, because it had the upbeat bits in the middle, it wasn't the most depressing thing. But no. it was so interesting as well, because it, it happened really slowly. But at the end, most of the passages were just like him writing in exhaustion or him writing a really bad day. And it was like, you could see the progression and the pressure of the job and you look at a passage that happened at the end compared to one at the beginning when he was still so, like, pepping his step and, like, excited yeah. and gung-ho to, like, at the end when he's like, I've got so much pressure on me and I'm so worried about making a mistake and, like, I can't deal because, with this much pressure. Yeah, because he didn't make a mistake per se, but something really bad happened. He lost a baby and the mother nearly died, I think. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I just, like, think that she lost a lot of blood and, like, yeah. had permanent damage or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so he was horrified that that happened because there was something that should have shown up on a scan. And he was like, this mm. is just something that should have shown up or they should have seen on a scan, but they didn't. And he was saying as well that his SHO, senior house officer, was really good. Like, she was doing everything right. She was cutting in, like, she did the layers perfectly. She was doing everything right. It was just that one thing that didn't show up on the scan. Yeah, and he was, like, the most senior person there at the time. So everything was basically on him to make that decision. And he called the consultant. The consultant came in, called someone else, came in, tried something, like, and it just... And they, the, con work. the consultant, his consultant said to him, like, you did everything right. You did what I would have done. You did everything you could. From that point on, he was so worried about everything. He was like, I got doing... paranoid. He got really paranoid. And he was like, I'm going to do all the cesareans by myself. And also like, I think I, I have to like make sure that I don't make another yeah. mistake. And I think one of the saddest things about it as well is that he had that day of everyone being like, oh, that's really sad. And then the next day it was like back to business as normal. And someone dealing with that. Like, if, if a loved one of mine died in that sort of situation, I would be devastated. But also, like, the doctor would be devastated anyway, even if they don't know this person. That's yeah, because, a loss of a life, and you're yeah. witnessing that, and you were there at the moment that like, it happened. Like, it's literally their job. Like, it's in the Hippocratic Oath. You'd be thinking over and over and over, like, what if I'd done this? What if I'd done this? As he was saying, like, he was like, what if I'd just come in an hour earlier? What if I'd done this? What if I'd been more with it? And it was like, you know that there was nothing really he could do in that situation, and he did the best he could and you're like oh buddy yeah he tells a story that uh, another one of his medic friends told him about how he had to deliver a baby perimortem or something yeah. which is like the mother just dropped dead on the floor and he had to pull the baby out yeah like he had to save the baby and the dad was like crying you saved the wrong and, like, one saying you saved yeah. the wrong one and i got I like, chills i was like oh yeah that's the point where i actually nearly burst into tears because i was like oh this poor man i connected to this book through the humor yeah. If it didn't have the funnier bits, I think I would have just been too sad. I wouldn't have wanted to keep reading because it's so serious. The parts that are serious are like really serious. And I was like, I don't think I would have wanted to keep reading it because yeah. I just wouldn't want to like think about those sort of things. The humor really cushions it, but it means that you're able to look back on those particular sad bits and go, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like crap. Yeah. Because he mentions in the book, he's like, uh, the good days are amazing because you've saved somebody's life. You've delivered like lives into the world, but the bad days are like f terrible. I love that his reasoning for going into Gain was like, well, you know, you've got more chance of getting two patients out of it than, than losing one. So. Yeah. So, like, it's better than geriatrics. Like, towards the end, he thought about the guy who recommended going into that uh, study thing by being like, ah, it's easy. You learn about, like, four things. And he was like, f*** him. <laughs> he lied to me. <laughs> I connected to it in the humour as well. And just the issues that he deal with were so humanized. I think just because of the fact that their doctors were like, oh my God, they're doctors. They're like godlike. And oh my God, they know everything. Mm. And just him being like, no, like most of the time we're in deep water. We have no idea what we're doing because we haven't been properly equipped with everything. Yeah, like every time he mentioned he had to Google stuff, I'm like, I do that at work, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> the training that they need and that they don't get is yeah. ridiculous. So that really made me connect to the character just because he was so lively I guess and because his anecdotes were so funny and he'd pick yeah like, like even in the sad ones things. he had some like some sarcastic one-liners he stuff. always had comments oh and there was one bit where he um there was this racist person mm -hmm. who was giving birth and she needed a cesarean and she'd been racist to the two black nurses that had come in before and he was like wouldn't it just be a shame if my incision was accidentally a little bit lower and cut off 
the head of the dolphin tattoo she had. And, and wouldn't, wouldn't it be weird if yeah. I like sewed it up so the dolphin head was like maybe an inch to the left and of the body. disconnected to the body? <laughs> wouldn't like, that be weird? And then the little note he had, like the lawyer said, yes, in fact, this would be assault. So let's just say I didn't do it. Yeah, and I was like, the fact that he said, so let's just say I didn't do it. I was like, he did it, and that makes me so happy. I just really enjoyed moments like that where someone would be rude to him, like a customer or something, and his little comment in the back of his head was like, "Fuck you, man, just like stop." But he can't say that. He can't say it, oh. but he can say it in his diary. <laughs> yeah. And that was great. And like the little things that he would do for like the patients that were really lovely to him, like giving them uh, his number so they'd send like photos of the baby to him because he was, was like, adorable. please, like I'd love that. And like getting a card and, and having chats to the grandparents and cute uh, things like that. Yeah, when he was working in the infertility clinic and a lady came in and didn't qualify for the care that they could provide her for the... Um, different like things they had available, like the different options they had available. She was like three kilos too heavy. And she like burst into tears and he was like, fine. So he wrote down in his notes that she was just a little lighter. Cause like half an hour away or a couple streets away, she would have qualified in some yeah. other clinic. And like thinking about that is ridiculous. Cause yeah. like, why would the requirements be different? The way he yeah. tried helping whoever he could, however he could, even if it involved like kind of lying on some forms that didn't actually matter medically. You yeah. Know? So we rated this book, both of us rated this book five out of five stars. Should it be stars or should it be something else? We use stars in the spoiler free. Five out of five babies. Five out of five babies. <laughs> so I highly recommend reading this book. It's definitely one that I think you'd want to read when you're probably 18 plus. I mean, you could definitely read this when you were 16 and 17 if you wanted to, but I think you'll get more out of it being 18 plus and I think everyone should read this. So you can also check out our spoiler free review which is also up on our YouTube channel in that we've picked the next book that we're going to read which is Six of Crows by so. Lee Bardugo. I'm pretty sure it's how you say your last name. Sure. So that's what we're going to be reading next and let us know in the comments if you've read this book, what you think about it. We'd love to continue the discussion below. Yeah, if you have any stories from relatives who are doctors as well, yeah, that'd and be interesting. Also, if you want to tell us more about like the NHS and what is happening over there now. Yeah, like if you're British and you can like yeah. tell us how this ended, whether like it got better for doctors, please let us know. Yeah, <laughs> we, we're curious now and we'd yeah. like to know. Anyway, hope you have a good day. Uh, see you next time.